Okay, some of you may well have seen the two videos that I put out yesterday evidencing Michael Massey's knowledge about the use of the Formula 1 safety car. He lied about the purpose of it at the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix Stewards Appeal and the world has been presented with a false narrative about it. Part 1 was demonstrating that at the 2019 Spanish Grand Prix Michael Massey not only released all of those lapped cars, he kept that safety car on track for a further two laps beyond the lap of release of those lapped cars in order to allow those released cars the chance of fully catching the back of the pack to restore sporting fairness to all competitors. This is the second example, the Brazilian 2019 Grand Prix. So, prior to watching this one, if you've not already seen those two, please do that. Go and check out the one, the uh, part one of four, where it shows you what took place at the Spanish Grand Prix. And the second one, which is Massey Gives Evidence, that's just a more detailed analysis, but demonstrates that that incident actually took 6.5 slash 6.6 laps of that race to deal with that incident. From the moment that incident took place, racing was neutralised for 6.6 .6 laps. And that is proved in that video. Remember, there were only 5.4 laps of Abu Dhabi remaining at the time that Nicholas Latifi crashed. So, on with the footage from the Brazilian Grand Prix of 2019. The incident in Brazil was Valtteri Bottas. Engine lost power. Coming down that straight towards Turn 4, we're all familiar with Turn 4 at Brazil. It's the one where Max Verstappen went off the side of the track, which is off the bottom of the screen, forcing Lewis Hamilton off the track on that side of the track. So where Valtteri Bottas is parked is out of the firing line. He came down that straight, the engine lost power, and he managed to tuck himself over there and took the car in. So all that needed to happen to recover this was a crane need to travel up this little service road, lift him up and reverse back down there, job done. Okay, quite a simple um, recovery operation. They're out of the firing line. There's no debris on track. There's no marshals needing to be on track. And the actual style of the circuit, the chance of a Formula 1 car losing control and being in this part of the track is absolutely minimal if there's any loss of control it's going to be coming over this side of the track not on the inside of the track plus you're semi protected by the end of this uh, barrier in any case could you deal with this using a virtual safety car well, i'd suggest that you could i would suggest that you could but he chose the safety car now i'm going to just take this back because we've got yellow flag and we can see that Valtteri Bottas is, well, this is the onboard footage. Um, I'm going to take you to this bit. I'm going to go to track of you, and then we're going to listen to what he said, and we're going to see how long it takes. So, track of you. Let's hope the internet's working better on this particular uh, video. So, track of you. You can see Valtteri Bottas's um, creamy blue dot midway down the straight between turn three and four but heavily slowing down so let's let's play this through Bottas is pulling over and he's pulling out of this race Valtteri Bottas slowing down we saw the smoke coming out of the back of his engine and it's going to be a terminal problem for Valtteri Bottas as he retires from this race and how sensibly will he park that car will we need a virtual safety car will we need a safety car so Right on the corner, on the inside of turn four. Verstappen is the race leader at this moment in time. Hamilton is second. Uh, Verstappen is just starting whatever lap they're going to be on. We're going to have a look at data view in a second. And he's followed by Hamilton. So they're very close, the two leaders. So let's have a look at data view. So I've rewound it just a fraction, just to show you that on the bar at the bottom of the screen, you've got Verstappen, the blue dot, leading the race followed by Hamilton and they are finishing the end of that lap which is the end of lap 52 
and just about to start lap 53 you'll see this counter in the top corner of the screen which is lap 52 of 71 and as we play this forward race and how sensibly will he park that car will we need a virtual safety car will we need a safety car in and we've clicked over to lap 53 so we let's just say the start of lap 53 is when this incident actually begins start of lap 53 so lap 53 counts as the first lap Oh, he's done a very good job indeed there to keep it going, trundle down, find the gap in the fence and park it off the track. Yeah, he's out of the firing line then. So, firstly, we get the yellow flag. The yellow flag is to say there's a safety concern. That safety concern being that there's a car parked on the edge of the track. Even though it's out the firing line, it still needs dealing with because if a car does crash into that other car at speed, there's a severe risk of injury to the driver it doesn't absorb impact in the same way that a crash barrier or tire wall does so lost the power copy yellow flag now look at this situation in the race brazil being a relatively short track means that those in the lead can start lapping some of the cars further down the field quite quickly and cars up until seventh place Pierre Gasly have been lapped it's all recorded on data view Robert Kubica in the Williams in the same way that the Williams cars uh, were lapped twice uh, he's been lapped twice in this event George Russell is 28 seconds adrift of Hulkenberg there in 18th and you'll see Bottas here start dropping down the order as the other cars continue to pass him. Oh, that's a, a huge shame for Valtteri Bottas's first retirement since Germany. That was after a crash in the wet towards the end of the race. This is because of a power unit problem and they can just push that Mercedes back through the gap and get it out of the way. Surprised it carried on as long as it did after we first saw the smoke. Yeah, it was a matter of when rather than if and as you see Bottas drop down the order as all the cars go past that site you will now see that Gasly a lapped car is in sixth position so if I go back to track of view you'll have a, a, an indication of where the cars actually are on track look at the time gap Gasly is actually 33 seconds behind Albon which you might say, well, that's quite a significant period of time. Yes, it is, but Vettel is 20 seconds behind Hamilton. What will Vettel get the chance to do? Vettel will get the chance to close up right behind. Leclerc is 14 seconds behind Vettel. He'll close that gap. Albon is 5 seconds behind Leclerc. He'll close that gap. Gasly is 33 seconds behind Albon. Watch what happens between Gasly and Albon as we play this through on track of view. So we pick it up here. Pierre Gasly is about in the middle of the screen, blue dot where the play icon is in the center of the screen. Alex Albon, the car in front of him in fifth, is by turn 13, the darker blue dot. Okay, but you see that Verstappen, the race leader, followed by Hamilton, are here at turn six. And Gasly is behind Hamilton. So you've got first, second, and then Gasly, the lapped car, in sixth. Okay. Fifth place Albon is further up the road. Um, we've got Russell and Kibitza in between. Um, but again, Verstappen would be coming up to lap Russell for the second time. And if they catch Kibitza, they'd be lapped for a third time in this race. Um, but obviously that doesn't happen because we get a safety car ultimately deployed. But that's to give you an indication of the distance between these competitors and where they sit on track. Now, what you need to understand is this is lap 53. So at what point in time is the safety car actually deployed? Because initially it's just yellow flag. Let's play this through. Out of the way. Surprised it carried on as long as it did after we first saw the smoke. Yeah, it was a matter of when rather than if. So he's he is out of the firing line there. He's out of the way in, in a very sensible way that he 
has parked it. Hamilton getting ever nearer to Verstappen while we're watching this and getting close to DRS range as well. Yeah. Looks like Hamilton's happier on these medium tyres. Uh, Karun, to you very quickly. Max has been complaining on the radio saying Lewis did not slow down enough for the yellow flags. So uh, expect Jonathan Wheatley from Red Bull to be complaining about that. We might hear it here. Oh, Lewis didn't slow down enough. Man. Yeah, saw that, Max. Okay. Well, they both went through in that first sector in exactly the same time, at 18 points. <laughs> yeah, but you still like to um, vilify somebody and your Red Bull team, rather than set the record straight, they will continue vilifying somebody. That was Jonathan Wheatley, the guy that's now going to Audi Formula One, apparently. I've got videos to do about Jonathan Wheatley. That man should end up in prison. Five, but I don't know how much Lewis Hamilton would have lifted at the, where the incident actually was. Yeah, the double waves will be just at the very beginning of the second sector, Max. So we're now on to lap 54. Uh, a tenth slower than Lewis through there. The stewards, a whole lot in it. the stewards have the ability, don't they, Martin, to look at the mini sectors, to go back and, and see all the data and the telemetry coming off the car, so they'll know if he slowed down enough or not. We'll keep you posted if anything is said. Valtteri Bottas stands by the side of the track. So the stewards know that. They have the data, they have the telemetry. F1 TV, creating the narrative, wanted to play to the world this notion that Max Verstappen thinks Lewis Hamilton is cheating. Who does that insight? Who does that insight? Is that the truth? Or is that just inciting people because that is the information that they want to present to the world rather than rely on the hard and fast facts of whether or not that's actually true? Watching his teammate go past in hot pursuits of Max Verstappen. I'd be inclined to just leave that car there and not put people out, actually. Safety car, oh. full... <laughs> Brundle would be inclined to just leave it there. And immediately, you know, that's right, Martin, just leave a car there that if a car does lose control and smash into somebody hitting a car is going to sustain a lot more damage than hitting a barrier. Thanks for your valuable insight, Martin. Anyway, safety car. Let's just go through to data view and uh, check. So just to confirm, top score, corner of the screen, it's very blurry at the moment because my internet quality is terrible. But lap 54 of 71, remember it was the end of lap 52 um, that Bottas pulled over. Off the car, so they'll know if he slowed down enough or not. We'll keep you posted if anything is said. Valtteri Bottas stands by the side of the track, watches his teammate go past in hot pursuits of Max Verstappen. And see the bar at the top, the yellow bar has just turned to safety car. Happen. I'd be inclined to just leave that car there and not put people out, actually. Safety car, oh, full safety oh, oh. car. So, well, well, well. Well, 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 indeed. It takes until Verstappen and Hamilton are at turn nine on lap 54 for the race director, Michael Massey, to decide to deploy the safety car. So it took one and a half laps for him to look at that Valtteri Bottas incident and decide he was going to deploy the safety car to recover it. That was the safety measure he was going to use in order to deal with that incident so we're now halfway around lap 54 now what do we take as the reference point for how long this incident takes because they've not been able to race past uh, turn four for that last lap and a half there's been yellow flags so under yellows you have to slow down and there is no overtaking in that, that i don't know if it's the full sector but it's certainly that region of the track the region where the yellow flags are, you have to slow down, no overtaking. I don't know if that extends to the entire sector or just that specific, you know, with that couple of corners. Um, I'm not 100% certain on that, but we do know you slow down, no overtaking at that point. So that, that, that actually neutralizes racing for that section of track. Now we've got full safety car, that means neutralize racing. That means all these competitors will bunch up. We know that from position six downwards is lapped. 
and them cars are going to need to be released prior to racing now. So halfway around lap 54, let's let's use that as the reference point and let's see how many laps it takes. And bearing in mind, this is an incident that what what needs to happen? Nothing needs to be swept off the track. A crane is going to need to be brought to Bottas's car. It's got to be lifted up and just reverse back, you know, 20 metres behind the barriers. That's it. It should should be next to nothing to actually clear this up. Anyway, let's go back to track of view and play this through. OK, so let's um, let's uh, hear the announcement of the safety car again. Halfway around lap 54 and let's see how long this takes. How long will we wait? Trying to just leave that car there and not put people out actually. Safety car, oh, full safety oh, oh. car. Well, 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 safety car. And this could make things very interesting. In Let that be a lesson to you. Ignore what Brundle says. He hasn't got a clue and he lies. Gives his opinions which are desire driven and they often conflict. They're often the opposite of what he says in other stages and at other races that we see. Why is that, Martin Brundle? Why is that? Indeed, in this race, as the pack will now, Concertina together, and because Valtteri Bottas had an engine problem and pulled over to the side of the track, well, the race control. Unfortunately, we're going to have to deal with some buffering, but hopefully... Control, the race director has not thought, too much. well, we need a safety car here, so no overtaking. Everyone, Constantine is together. What does now this mean? And a cheap pit stop for anybody who needs to come in now. You only lose, it takes you about 11 seconds to stop. Box, box, opposite Verstappen. So if Verstappen comes in, you stay out. And if Verstappen stays out, you come in. So Ted Kravitz, you're going to see one of... I think we're buffering. We'll see how this One of these two goes. cars Did. possibly is Verstappen coming in, Ted. So he stays out, but Verstappen's going to put a set of soft tyres on, and then he's going to be very quick. It's only 11 seconds. Verstappen can make that time back. So this is a gift to the likes of Leclerc, who can put fresh tyres on. Roman Grosjean, who is being chased down by loads of other people on a trying to make a one-stop race. That's going to be a gift to him. I think Lance Stroll is going to pit as well, as I see... Uh, the Red oh, Bull coming it. in on those soft tyres. McLaren, they're going to pit as well. So uh, it's really helping a lot of the midfield runners. But let's see the Hamilton and Verstappen as Max is now going to chase him down. Did you not think that was slightly pop and kettle calling black with Verstappen <laughs> saying uh, <laughs> that Lewis didn't slow down enough for yellow flag? I thought he'd learned his Constant. lesson well from Mexico, Ted. Mexico. Don't be a cynic. <laughs> but on the restart, on the restart, Max has got a lot of cars in front of him. Uh, Grosjean, Gasly, in fact, no, just two cars between him and Lewis Hamilton. So Martin Brundle proposes on the restart, he's got, Max has got two cars in between him and Grosjean. Why are you saying that, Martin? There's Valtteri Bottas's car getting winched away. Michael Massey, the uh, race director in the uh, the background there, uh, with his hair getting ever greyer, I'm sure, as in comes Charles Leclerc for his pit stop. The, the key here is that the, the lapped cars, Martin, can unlap themselves. Well, what do you know, Crofty? The key here is that the lapped cars can unlap themselves. I didn't think it was mandatory in the rules. But that's normally on a wet day in Belgium. <sighs> so if there are a few cars in between Hamilton and Verstappen on the track, I think most of those are lapped cars and will get out of the way. Good point, Crofty. See, one doesn't know. If one doesn't know, the other one does. You know, if one doesn't know, the other one does. So back in Abu Dhabi 2021, when Brundle was saying, oh, um, yeah, but Max has got an awful lot to do there. Crofty, where were you saying, yeah, but the thing is, Martin, you've seen that old twat. They've got to release the lapped cars, because that's what they always do. So on the restart at the moment, it's yeah, Gasly's been lapped. Grosjean's uh, been lapped. They'll both clear out of the way. So Hamilton will have Verstappen right behind him. It's, it's not an absolute given that they let lap runners through, is it? But it's certainly available. It's, uh, no, it is an absolute given, Martin. It's been an absolute given since the beginning of the 2012 
season. It's not just an option that's available. Why are you trying to lie to the world and present to them there's some jeopardy of a safety car? What do we do? What's going to happen? Nobody knows what's going to happen under the safety car. It's spin the wheel time because nobody knows. No, it, it's not like that at all. The race director has chosen to deal with this incident using the safety car. That, by de the deployment of the safety car, neutralises racing. It wipes out all of the previously built advantages between all competitors. And they have to achieve this situation of all the competitors being in the correct race order, nose to tail, before racing can resume. And if cars have been lapped, you need to carry out the unlapping procedure and give them enough time to try to make it back to the back of the pack before you go racing again. The caveat being, if a car has been lapped twice, then it only gets one lap back. That's the way things work. It's at the discretion of the... Yeah, nine times out of ten. Massey, that they... No, it's not at the discretion of Michael Massey. There is no place in the regulations which say this is discretionary, because it's not. It's something you have to do, and it's because it's a sport. And you have sporting code, and you have sporting regulations. And therefore, you have to apply sporting fairness to all competitors. Yes, as you say, they, they usually do. So Leclerc has had his... Uh... They usually do. Well, can you give me an example, Martin, from the 2012 season, from the start of the 2012 season, until now, where they haven't done it? And if you can give me an example, I'll give you the reason why they didn't do it, Martin. There was one incident whereby... The communications to one of the drivers broke, so that driver didn't actually get the message, even though race control gave the order. So race control did what it needs to do, it applied the regulations. The other time was whereby the driver that wasn't released was not eligible to be released, on the grounds that he got himself lapped after the safety car had passed the second safety car line for sorry the first safety car line for the second time making him ineligible to be released you need to know what you're talking about martin if you're the presented expert of the sport which you are but you do know this you're just lying because you're being paid to lie you're being paid to hype up this show uh, second pit stop of this race and that will definitely help him. He's now on the uh, the soft tyres through to the end of this race. And, and uh, just get the feeling this has worked out beautifully for Charles Leclerc in, in his scrap that will be coming up with uh, Sebastian Vettel, assuming, of course, he gets past uh, Alex Albon. He's quite a long way behind him at the moment, but he'll certainly have a much faster package in the... Uh, Ferrari, as you say, yep. to... Uh, well, he's a long way behind him at the moment, but th this safety car period is going to go on for a while, I think, while it all sorts itself out. But how long will we wait, Crofty? This is going to go on for a long time. What jeopardy? How long will we wait? Well... What tyre has he got to? So he's gone to the soft tyre. You're going to give me some power? So if you pre-select the strap mode 5, uh, we've got everything we've got at the moment. And that will be on his steering wheel, the, the different strap modes that he can uh, he can go to. Max wants them to hurry up, he wants to get on the tail yeah. of the Mercedes, he'll be on better tyres. We've already seen him coast past Just once climbing the hill today. Well the thing is, Hamilton will want this safety car to stay out as long as possible. Max Verstappen, as you rightly say, please, can we go in as quick uh, as quick as we, as we can? Bert Mylander uh, in danger of being overtaken by Lewis Hamilton there. And, and I know he, he looks like he's uh, going for a sun. Well, this is two laps on from the moment in time the safety car was actually deployed or selected by race control. The afternoon uh, drive of the country, but he's, he's going as fast as he can. Uh, Hamilton just feels here, uh, yeah, sitting duck. 
about yeah that's some of the strategy calls from mercedes over the years you know hamilton seems to have respect for bono i don't i think he's shit anyway let's carry on Max on fresher, faster tyres behind him with a with a package that has worked well all weekend. But just how many laps will Verstappen have to get past Hamilton when we go racing again? Safety car needs to speed up, man. Jeez. Yeah. That's a standard message. They all seem to say that, don't they? Uh, I got the feeling that message was. However, what we don't have is the actual data of the lapping speed of that safety car in Abu Dhabi 2021 was that safety car going purposefully slow down the straights to actually ensure that there was sufficient time left to get a lap of racing in there wasn't that time because they broke the regulations they had to break the regulations to make that happen but was the speed of the safety car part of that manipulation that's something I can't evidence at the moment there might be ways, but I can't do it at the moment. It's coming as well. Uh, Ted, down to you. It seems like with Mercedes, it was like, well, we're second anyway. Let's try this, because if it doesn't go well, we'll probably still only be second. Uh, but that's not counting with Charles Leclerc, who surely is going to devour his teammate Sebastian Vettel, Crofty, as you've been saying. Vettel knows it. He's been on the radio saying, what were our options? Could we have come in? What other things could we have done? But I think they just... Well, either they were late or didn't get the right tyre or didn't have the tyres available, but they didn't, and I think Leclerc's going to get the better of his teammates. Lapped cars are now starting to unlap the... So, lapped cars are now starting to unlap. So, with that being the case, I'm saying this is lap... So, if it was lap halfway around 54, I'm saying this is lap 58 now, or 50... No, 57, sorry. 57. Let's just double check on data view if they're on lap 57. That's how long this takes to switch screen. There you go. Lap 57, then now unlapping. Bearing in mind, Valtteri Bottas um, pulled his car over at the end of what was lap 52 for Verstappen and Hamilton. They were starting lap 53. And now going on to lap 57, it was halfway round, round 54 that they deployed the safety car. So it's over two and a half laps of a safety car for them to clear a car away that wasn't on track, that hadn't damaged any bar bar barriers. There was no debris on track. There was no fire to clear up, uh, to have to extinguish. And all they had to do is drive a crane up the recovery road that was there and reverse it back 20, 30 metres. And that was all they had to do. And that took two and a half laps, more than two and a half laps of the Brazil track before they would declare the, the track safe for then to begin this unlapping procedure. Okay. Two point, what, six laps maybe? two point maybe seven laps of brazil to deal with such a minuscule incident such as that so let's have a look once we go back uh, which means a lot of action as you can see <laughs> starting with car number 10 pierre G Pierre Gasly. So remember Pierre Gasly. So Pierre Gasly, at this moment in time, is now, Gasly. Once, uh, we get to here, in sixth position. Okay, sixth position, a point scoring position. First you get 25, second 18, third 15, fourth 12, fifth 10, sixth you get eight points. All right, so currently on course for eight points and he's in sixth position and he has been released to get him out of the way of the race between the leaders because that's what you've got to do isn't it you've got to release him to get him out of the way of the race between the leaders and we're now on lap 57 there's a lot of lap cars so it's a very short lap here at Edinto Lagos uh, very quickly do you start getting laps and this is going to take a while to, to sort itself out a little bit how many laps older are Sebastian Vettel's tyres five laps older uh, than uh, Charles Leclerc's 
Yeah, yeah. Max is on brand new softs then, of course. Yeah. So and he's on Lu brand new softs. When did Albon come into the pits? Lewis is on 12 lap old mediums. So he'd only, he'd only just come into the pits, Albon, as well. Is there, is there a danger here, Martin, that Lewis Hamilton is under threat from Verstappen, Vettel, Albon and Leclerc towards the end of this race? Could be. Yep. Leclerc's got to pass Albon first before he can get yep. to his teammate, but Vettel's sitting there as well. So is Lewis Hamilton in danger from Leclerc in fifth? I mean, no, no danger from Gasly. I mean, Gasly's just getting out of the way, isn't he? Uh, exposed, isn't he? Albon was unlucky because I think he did a green flag pit stop, didn't he? Yes, he did. But they've all concertinaed up. I guess they, when you put the full safety car out, and uh, when you put the full safety car out, it means there are periods of time when the pack are all round the other side of the track, uh, and if you want to clear a car away, whereas a bird. Absolutely right, Martin. Funny that you tell us this so that that educates us. So that we think we're learning something about Formula One, but then you tell us a pack of lies in the next breath as well. And that's the trouble. We don't know what to believe when you say it, Martin. There's a problem there. Virtual safety car. They can keep coming round all the time. Um, it was a, yeah, it was a, a, a difficult call, but that, that car was out of the firing line. You couldn't hit that car there, but I guess leaving a stranded car on the side of the track is not really very Formula One, is it? No. So, what you're seeing now is as they're completing lap 57, Kubica has been lapped twice and he's going to get one lap back. Russell it has just passed Hamilton and essentially, whilst Russell is in 18th and, and Kubica 19th, Russell has to be seen as being the last car that's going to be released because Kubica is going to be given one of them laps back he's not going to be allowed to make it all the way around and go back past everybody again and then unlap himself for a second time they won't do that but what they've done they've released all of the cars that have been lapped at least once Russell's the final running one of them in that order and that is on lap 57 so according to the regulations the safety car will return to the pits at the end of the following lap. So the next lap around will be lap 58 and we expect to see the safety car return to the pits and Hamilton start backing these cars up so that then when he floors it, racing will be begin as they cross the start finish line um, to commence lap 59 of this race. Let's see what happens. Struggling to keep temp in his tires, man. Yeah, because he, he needs that safety car to go a bit faster. There's the Williams of George Russell uh, unlapping himself. And with Russell now doing that, that means that all the lapped cars have unlapped themselves. Oh, so you do know, Crofty. You do know, you know, back in Abu Dhabi 2021. It wasn't that, was it? So Norris, Alonso, Ocon, Leclerc and Vettel... And it's ending, and it's ending. Wow! That's what we got in Abu Dhabi. You know, we didn't get, and Ricardo, and Stroll, and Schumacher. Three times you gave us the list, but that list of eight only consisted of five. Three times. You couldn't tell us which of the last cars was the one that was the last. Now that that last car has unlapped, we can... Uh, now go racing again after this next lap. Let's just rewind to see what Crofty knew again. So we're going to have to wait for a bit of buffering. I probably should have hit the rewind button while I was talking. Let's see what Crofty says. Williams of George Russell uh, unlapping himself. And with Russell now doing that, that means that all the lapped cars have unlapped themselves. But Pierre Gasly is just going through uh, Lorania, uh, the, the, the little pine tree at turn eight, while Charles Leclerc is going through turn one. So there's a massive gap for the pack now to catch up with the top six who, all, who were all running on the lead. Have oh, they got to catch up now, have they, Crofty? Have they got to catch up? I thought they were just had to get out of the way. <laughs> there's inconsistencies in what we're getting from Sky Sports, isn't there? Have they got to catch up or have they got to get out of the way? What are you concerned about? Aren't they out of the way now? What, what, what's the problem, Crofty? Lap. 
So that safety car, Martin, could be out for a couple of laps longer. Do you, th <laughs> you think it's going to be out for a couple of laps longer, Crofty? How long will they wait? We think it might be this lap that it's coming in, because we think the safety car will come in at the end of this lap, and there will be one racing lap. That's when they've not carried out this procedure. Phil? Yeah, if, they, if they're going to let them get all the way back round to but the I, back of the pack, yeah. I, and I kind of think they, they need to do that, because it's such a short lap here. Yeah. What you don't want... You think the reason that they need to do it has anything to do with the length of lap? or that's what the regulations are about and that's what the sporting fairness to all competitors is all about. Hmm, let me know what you think in the comments section, Crofty. Is the pack all concertinaing up and then interfering with the, the, the race leaders in about 10 laps time? You're interfering. You're interfering with the minds, vulnerable minds that you are interfering with that's abuse. If that makes sense. I know we've only got 71 laps here, but I mean, the key is that they then don't interfere with the race for the rest of this race. And the key is here that these release cars don't interfere with this race for the rest of this race, okay? David Croft, let me just pay attention to that sentence there, okay? Pay attention to that sentence there. I'm just going to rewind that. Listen to Crofty now, this magical sentence, absolutely magical sentence. Once the uh, internet decides to do its thing, I might sing you a song while we're waiting. I think you'd enjoy that with my uh, melodic voice. Oh, you got saved. Here we go. In about 10 laps time, if that makes sense. I know we've only got 71 laps here, but I mean, the key is that they then don't... The key is they don't then, they cut him off, mid-flow, I'm not going to rewind it. The key is that they don't then interfere with the race for the rest of this race. And, because they'll all be scrapping away for points as well, and it's only fair that they can then uh, run their... They'll be, they'll be scrapping for points, you know, but let only eight points, six points... Four, four points, two points, one points, let them have their scrap. Don't let him... Scrap with the guy that's in fifth, that's on ten. Is, is that is that what you're proposing, Crofty? Their race. They're about a half a lap ahead now. Yeah. So I, I think, I, I would imagine in a couple of laps time, the safety car uh, will go. And it's what, the uh, the twelfth time we've had a safety car affected race here at Interlagos. The safety car is... Apologies for the buffering. Let me just uh, see if it will catch up if I pause it. We'll try again. Remarkably fast for a road car. Why does it need to be a road car? Because it's got to be on the key or uh, in any conditions, wet or dry, on a set of tyres that are suitable with enough fuel to take this lot around for a good while. Christian Horner uh, on the Red Bull pit wall. Uh, good news or bad news, this safety car? And why did you decide to pit Max Verstappen? Well, in a situation like that, Mercedes would have done the opposite. So we've taken an attacking approach to this last part of the race. We've conceded track position, but put him on what we think will be a better tyre to the end of the race. And the end of the race, he's going to have a chance to get past Lewis, but surely you're going to have to be watching as well for, for Fettel, for Albon, Leclerc. All... Could be a great... Yes, this would would, would have been a, a truly great video, were it not for the the, uh, the buffering. Never mind, or at least I'll claim it would have been. Grandstand, finish this. Yeah. Oh. This, this, we're looking at a grandstand finish. We love the grandstand finish, don't we? It's going to be a big one. So, uh, yeah, you know, we've uh, we've gone for it. Uh, as I say, if we'd have stayed... Right, in, in all the excitement, what I've missed is... I've missed the safety car going into the pits, haven't I? You know, that, that mandatory lap that those release cars have been given. Uh, we should have had Lewis Hamilton back in the pack up here and then bolting for it and so that when they crossed the start finish line about where Gasly is now racing would have been resumed that didn't happen because we're now talking to Christian and, and the racing gods aren't we so we've lost track of what's actually going on on track um, so let's uh, let, I, I totally missed it and we're now into the following lap so the safety car is still on the track 
having already performed that mandatory lap. You couldn't make it up, could you? No doubt they would have pitted. We elected to take the aggressive approach, so uh, we'll see what we've got to the end of the race. Thanks, uh, thanks ever so much, Christian, and good to have you with us uh, this weekend. How old are my tyres, man? I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep them behind. So they 15 laps. Safety car coming in at the end of this lap, so he's going to have 12 laps or so to try and survive this. It's, it's a Safety car coming in at the end of this lap. Hmm. Let's just double check what lap that might be. So we are on lap 59, and as you can see, they've now put on data view safety car ending which means racing will be resumed on lap 60. So what do we know? We know that Valtteri Bottas pulled over at the end of lap 52, meaning lap 53, lap 54, lap 55, lap 56, lap 57, 58, 59, which is seven laps were affected. The first lap and a half were where there were yellow flags waved at turn four, meaning you couldn't race at that point of the track. You had to slow down and there was no overtaking at that point. But then for the subsequent five and a half laps, there was the safety car procedure to deal with just removing a car that was already off the track. Nothing to clear up on track, no barriers to check, no fire to extinguish, five and a half laps. The race director took out of that race, all right, it's a short circuit. But you've either got seven laps from the point in the incident, five and a half laps from the point that the safety car was de declared. That's what happened in Brazil for a nothing incident. And what did Michael Massey do? What Michael Massey did was kept that safety car on track for two full laps beyond the lap that those lapped cars were released on. And what has he now done? What is the status of those cars at the point where they go racing again? We'll go back to track of you to have a look at that. So let's play this through on track of you. Safety car coming in at the end of this lap, so he's going to have 12 laps or so to try and survive this. It's, it's kind of all doom and gloom in Lewis Hamilton's head, yeah. but that's understandable given the position he's now in. 12 laps ago, but remember, we don't want Gasly, Grosjean, Sainz, Raikkonen, or any of them guys um, interfering with the race between the leaders, you know, not interfering with Leclerc. Albon, Vettel, Verstappen or Hamilton. Okay, the last thing we want is any kind of interference like that. Verstappen and the Red Bull have just had the raw pace today to yeah. put themselves in, in this strong position, but it's not done and dusted yet. But Lewis is definitely having a, a glass half empty day. Which could all change if he's on the top step of the podium at the end of this race. Max Verstappen is as keen as a young cocker spaniel behind him there to get going and you really do need to let the safety car get a long way away here because yeah, you climb the hill come on mate you've done this once already on the same compound so hamilton will back the pack up right now as verstappen is finding and has to jam on the brakes uh, and this is cruel 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 so let the safety car go away <laughs> oh and um, what have we got here we've got the field of competitors Nose to tail, correct race order. The anomaly being Kubica, but Kubica has been lapped twice, or had been, and was given one of those back. Hence, now a lap down. What you get is a second safety car incident in this race. Kubica is still a lap down. He's not released in that second safety car incident. The reason he's not released is because he was already given that lap back in this incident here. Between now and when that safety car incident is, he is not lapped again. Okay, the situation in terms of lapping, leaders lapping other runners in this car does not change from this point here. So when the second safety car is deployed, they do not say, oh, this lapped car, Kubica, he's just been lapped. 
we now need to release him. No, they've already dealt with that and, and dealt with that situation, made that judgment call at this safety car incident. Okay, hence that is an incident where you will see an anomaly, but that is because of this situation here. But racing is about to resume. See Verstappen, look how keen he is to try and get past Lewis. He's almost level with him. Yeah, but he's nervous of that Ferrari coming at him as well. And yeah. that's exactly what Lewis is trying to do. Trying to back him into the Ferrari. Using all the experience that he's got. And they can't pass, of course, until they get past uh, the, uh, the, the, the line. Yeah. And he's still trying to get a bit of temperature into his tyres, Lewis. You see, Lewis couldn't do that in Abu Dhabi. You know, you know why Lewis couldn't see if the Ferrari could overtake Verstappen in uh, Abu Dhabi 2021? Oh, that was because they left two lapped cars in between Verstappen and uh, Carlos Sainz in that Ferrari, offering that protection to Max Verstappen, preventing third from challenging second. Funny that. Hamilton is now, he goes, Alex Albon all over the back of Sebastian Vettel, he's got a decent jump, Gasly's right on the tail of Charles Leclerc as well, Albon is going right out. Gasly, do not interfere. Anyway, 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 well, the race had to end eventually, and when it did, this is what happened. Verstappen gets his foot down for one last time towards the line, Lewis Hamilton trying to make his way where we've got past Timo Glock in 2008 and Jun Sao to get past Gasly. The checker flag is out. The Brazilian Grand Prix goes to Max Verstappen a year after he finished second and had it. What's happening here? Taken away. It is redemption day. Hamilton fights Gasly to the line. Gasly comes home to take second place. Gasly came home to take second place. What? Wasn't he laps wasn't he sixth um wasn't he just like made to get out of the way so that he didn't interfere with the race between the leaders what's he doing interfering with the race between the leaders you're not allowed to come second if you've um, been released having been lapped are you i thought you just had to get out of the way or has he gone from being on eight world championship points to 18 world championship points because he was a sport afforded sporting fairness in the same way that each of those competitors in the top five were allowed to bunch up one behind the other Gasly in sixth well yeah he was allowed to bunch up next to fifth in the same way that fifth was allowed to bunch up to fourth and fourth was to third and third was to second and second was to first you can't just throw away the chances of sixth because look what happened sixth became second science well he's now fourth he was released as well strange that strange that the sport of formula one can't tell you its own rules strange that they lie strange that they pretend that oh maybe this can happen on this occasion but on another occasion it can't Oh, this is optional. Sometimes we see it, sometimes we don't. And yet they can't give us an example of when we don't see it. And they can't explain the caveats of the reasons why the eligibility isn't there for them not to do it. Strange that, isn't it? It's a hype show. A hype show that employ... Well, they're all fraudsters. They employ fraudsters and the people running the show are fraudsters. It's a criminal enterprise, and we've got to take them down. There's not just one, there's two more examples of this that I'm going to make videos out of. So this is part two of four of exposing what Michael Massey, the race director, knew about the rules of the sport and what his authority over that safety car was. So he knew the regulation. He knew that he had to release the lapped cars. He knew he had to release all of them lapped cars. He knew that that safety car had to remain on track for at least one more lap. And this is the second time where he has kept it on track for two laps beyond the lap that those were released on. That's not a human error. You could have described Spain 2019 as a human error if it have, you know, oh... I was too busy listening to Christian Horner 
and I forgot to bring the safety car back in when I should have brought it in and it just stayed out on track for another lap but like this race here we were too busy listening to Christian Horner uh, and we you know it slipped our mind and uh, you know slipped our attention that this safety car remained out on track and didn't come in after just that one mandatory lap it stayed out there for another lap and you know just by coincidence you know this this same coincidence that we see every time you know this optional coincidence um all of the cars caught the back of the pack and sporting fairness was resu returned resumed to all competitors funny that funny that anyway part two of four this is part three and four to come thank you for your time please keep liking please keep subscribing if you're not already subscribed but importantly please keep sharing the content i feel certain that is what is the key to the growth of this channel and the key to growing this channel is to expose the truth to more and more people can't do it without your help and i truly appreciate it so thank you very much once again and i'll be returning with some more examples as soon as i get time thanks for your time